it's pretty pointless because you're gonna end up losing in the two shields anyway so i actually decided to let this go through here and i'm hoping we can survive What is going on everybody welcome back to the channel ox here with another video if you're new to the channel we do upload pokemon go content mostly related to pvp so please consider subscribing to the channel if that is of interest to you and if you're a returning subscriber like koofy donis thank you for the support in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some battles featuring the team that helped me get back onto the leaderboard and surpass 3500 which is my highest elo for go battle league season 6. this is a team that i featured in one of the previous videos earlier this week so I will put a link up to that right here if you guys have not checked that out definitely go see it because it does feature some pretty good battles as well this team consists of a Galvantula lead with defense Deoxys and Meganium in the back I know a lot of you point out that the team is very weak to Alolan Marowak it's also very weak to an Altaria lead and it does have a bit of a struggle against the Galarian Stunfisk lead thing with Stunfisk is that it does have Deoxys as a safe switch it's kind of a check for it and Meganium is a pretty good counter so I don't really mind the Stunfisk this leads too much but the Marowax and the Altarius are quite difficult. Now with that said, I built this team based around what I was seeing in the specific elo range I was at. What that means is that this team might not work for you in your specific elo range. It might work for you, but you also might be seeing different Pokemon from that of what I am seeing in the 30 or 3500s right now. So me, for example, I'm not actually seeing too many Alolan Marowax at all, really. And I'm really not seeing too many Galarian Stunfisk in the lead. I am seeing Stunfisk, but most of the time they are in the back or operating as a safe swap. If you're watching my videos last week, I was pretty much in the 2800s doing random spice and i managed to climb up quite a bit running this team now so it's been working if you do want to test it out it is a pretty solid team that has been working for me at least for this week if you guys enjoy this type of content please make sure you smash that like button it really helps the channel grow leave a comment in the comment section down below subscribe to the channel if you have not already and without any further ado let's jump into the first battle right now Alright, so honestly, I wasn't really planning to upload any more Great League battles for this season. However, I realized once I started going up in raiding, a lot of you might want to see the team I'm actually running. So I did record two sets for this, and they're against some really talented trainers. You can see here in the first match, JGen11, one of the best battlers in the world, and we were leading Galvantula into Skarmory. So usually when I see this lead, I anticipate they're either going to switch out right away, or if they stay in, they're going to try and catch. So for that reason, I don't throw once I get to the Discharge, and they did try to catch, switching into the Stunfisk. At this point, I'm going to bring out the Meganium here, and I was trying to think what the other Pokemon in the back might be, because Stunfisk is a pretty hard counter to Galvantula, probably the top counter actually, so for them to bring that out makes me think they must have another counter for Galvantula in the back as well. I was thinking Bastion on at this point, so... I decided to go straight for the Frenzy Plant here at the start. Didn't want to throw the Earthquake in case they do shield. And once they let this go through, I realized that they're probably going to let the second one go through as well. Come back in with the Skarmory and try to farm me down. So I was pretty comfortable going straight Frenzy Plant at this point. And we maintain switch advantage. The Skarmory comes back in here, totally expecting a farm down here. Do get to this Frenzy Plant, which is some nice chip damage. So definitely going to take this right here. And at this point, I have a move ready on the Galvantula, but I decide not to throw it when I come in because I'm anticipating they're probably going to try and catch. They actually did not, so I have to burn a shield here. That's totally fine. Now I expect them to switch out, but they actually stay in for a bit and they do catch this move onto Swampert, so they did a good job there, making me think that maybe they would stay in a bit longer, catch the Discharge onto the Swampert there. Now, I realize that Swampert has a very good matchup against Deoxys, so I have to throw this Lunge first at the Swampert, not only to get a shield, but also to make this matchup a bit more manageable for Deoxys. And the move that is most threatening to Swampert from Deoxys would be Psycho Boost. So in this particular situation, I'm going to try and build up to make it look like I'm building up for back-to-back -back Psycho Boost or something. You know, you gotta fake it like you have it. So taking this Hydra can you can see that Lunge debuff certainly is helping out here. And I do get to this Rock Slide. This will probably get a shield here from the Swampert. And I'm hoping I could get to the second one before they get to another move, which I am able to do here. So thankfully, this should be enough to knock out the Swampert. And now that Skarmory is going to come back in, I still have my shield. So they're actually going to have to throw a move here or else I will be able to knock them out with the Deoxys. So they throw the move here, come back in with the Galvantula. One discharge should be enough. We have the shield in case they have a move. And we take that game against a very talented trainer there. 
you can see I did pretty much hard counts to the line for the most part, so it was pretty fortunate for me. Jav Brony here in the next matchup. I really hope this trainer is actually a fan of wrestling and The Rock with a name like that. But we see an Umbreon lead here. And again, this is a pretty positive lead. You can see I did sneak in the extra Volt Switch there, which is really beneficial for me. Foul play comes through, I'm gonna shield that up. And it looks like they're gonna stay in this matchup. So I'm gonna go straight for the lunge here. Lunge isn't going to KO, so they could definitely take one for sure. And they do allow that to go through. Now I get to the second lunge. Looks like not CMP tie, but I should be able to get this lunge off after here. Foul play, gonna let that one go through and throw one more Volt Switch before throwing the lunge here. Let's see if they're gonna let the Umbreon go down or shield this up. They decide to let the Umbreon go down. So at this point, they come in with Hypno. So I know Lunge is still going to thread this. What I'm thinking about now is do I want to bring in the Ganium or do I want to bring in the Deoxys? Because one of those decisions is going to be right. It's whether they have Shadow Ball or Fire Punch. I decide because it's Shadow, it's probably Fire Punch, Thunder Punch. So I come in with Deoxys here. And even if it is Shadow Ball, it is debuffed from the Lunge. Happens to be a Shadow Ball, so that's not good. Building up energy here, waiting for a potential switch. They do come into the Azumarill, so I bring in the Meganium, storing that energy on my Hypno, on my Deox. Now at this point, I was gonna let this go through, but then I thought to myself, wait a minute, they showed Shadow Ball. So that means they probably don't have Fire Punch, right? So if they actually have Shadow Ball Thunder Punch, I should shield up my Meganium here because it's actually gonna have a pretty good matchup against that Hypno. So I decided to shield the Ice Beam there, and they do burn their own shield as well. So I was hoping that this here, would be enough to knock out the Azumarill and then I'd be able to have a very good matchup but they survive by 1 HP and they're at the Ice Beam so possibly an XL Azumarill or just very good IVs in general we take that Ice Beam which is not good now the Hypno comes back in they need Fire Punch or I guess Ice Punch to knock me out here this can't be a Shadow Ball I don't think it's a Thunder Punch we survive look at what I do here I throw a Vine Whip then I switch out into Deoxys to catch the end of that confusion animation so the confusion actually registers on Deoxys while I got that energy on the Meganium. At this point I know they have to throw or else I'm going to get to that Rock Slide and now what I'm hoping I could do is come in throw one Vine Whip and the Frenzy Plant before that confusion registers and you see it right there we are able to do that we are going to be able to take this game so we're off to a 2-0 star in that set very difficult game right there so let's move into the next battle here. Going up against Master Red 080. So a lot of really talented trainers here. Obviously, all these trainers at this high of an elo range are gonna be very difficult to face. We see Shadow Obama Snow. Now, Shadow Obama Snow is a lot more difficult than the regular Obama Snow because it's doing a lot more damage here. And we will actually lose this in the two shields. So they did a really good job there preventing the extra volt switch from coming in. So nice fast move denial. And now I'm gonna go for the lunge here. Totally expect a shield to come up. And I made a mistake in this matchup before against the Shadow where I would go down, to where I would use both shields. It's pretty pointless because you're gonna end up losing in the two shields anyway. So I actually decide to let this go through here. And I'm hoping we can survive, we do. And I take a second before clicking here to prevent the forced over tap because I've been falling for that a lot lately. And look at that, they let it go through too. I win switch advantage there. They bring in Sableye. This is huge for me because now I get to keep my Deoxys away from this Sableye. I can come in with the Meganium here. And let's see if they choose to stay in this matchup. Looks like they are for the time being. I'm gonna go for the Frenzy Plant. It is CMP tie. So this Frenzy Plant should go through after this. I'm not gonna shield the first one. And now I am going to have to shield the second one if they choose to stay in and hope that I can land the Frenzy Plant onto the Sableye because I really need this Meganium for the Sableye. So you can see that should be CMP tie again. So I'm gonna shield this, but my Frenzy Plant should have been registered and it is. It's going to go through. This should be enough to knock out the Sableye and now it's gonna come down to whatever their third Pokemon is in the back. It's an Azumarill. This is amazing because now I know I could get to a Frenzy Plant before they're able to bubble me down. So I'm gonna throw this Frenzy Plant. Then I'm gonna instantly swap out into my Deoxys and it should be a GG here because all we need to do is get to one move. They pretty much need a Hydro Pump plus a second move in order to knock out the Deoxys. So Hydro Pump comes through, you can see it does about 60% of my health, but I'm able to take that game. And we're off to a 3-0 start here, so things are looking good for now. Let's move into the next match against Blood, or sorry, Blue Drocuted. Next match against Blue Drocuted, who is a subscriber to the channel, so a huge shout out to you. We got Altaria here. Altaria, probably one of the hardest leads for this team, along with Lola Marowak. 
Main reason is because it beats the Meganium in the back as well. So I go for the Discharge here right away, not expecting the Shield, which is very good. At this point, I will Shield the first Sky Attack. And then because they're now in range of a Discharge KOing, you can pretty much safely assume that they're going to Shield the next move. So you can actually go for the Lunge here which is going to debuff them. And then instead of switching on, I'm actually gonna stay in with the Galahantula, let it go down and then come in with the Deoxys. Now you can make the argument that I could switch out into the Deoxys, save my Galahantula, but I decided to just come in with Deoxys instead. They swap out into Victory Bell here. So this is a situation where you kind of wish you had Psycho Boost, but we're not running that. I'm gonna go for the Rock Slide here. And I kind of realized that I am gonna sort of need this Deoxys in the back for the Altair. So I bring in the Meganium here and I make a mistake here, I think, going for the Frenzy Plants. I think this is a mistake for sure, because I could have probably got to the Earthquake before they got there. No, I guess I couldn't actually. So I'm going to have to shield up this Sludge Bomb here. The main issue about shielding this up is that the Altair is going to come in. So at this point, I was thinking like, man, what do I do? I have to like over farm a little bit, but I wasn't. Sh I should have over farmed a bit more, I think, to have potentially a second Frenzy Plant ready for the Altaria, because this Altaria is going to be able to knock me out here. And now basically this game's gonna come down to Deoxys in the back. Only way I could probably win this is maybe if they have something like a Bastion on. Actually Machamp is another situation where I wish I had the Psycho Boost because you can see Rock Slide, I had the Rock Slide ready but I wouldn't KO so I had to go for the Thunderbolt there. Happens to be CMP tied, they needed the Rock Slide as well. So still a very close game despite that difficult lead but very well played to the opponent. Shout out to Blue Drocuted once again. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Next matchup, Goku, easy peasy, and we got Galvantula into Mew. Galvantula into Mew is a nice lead here to see for the Galvantula, of course. And usually, I am going to throw the lunge before they throw a move here. Uh, sometimes I build up a bit more before throwing, but in this case, I just went for it right away. And they're going to shield, so I have to be a little bit afraid of a flame charge. You can see I get the extra volt switch in there, which is huge. I'm gonna shield this up. Flame Charge is going to hurt, they do bait with Surf, but even Surf still does quite a bit of damage. Going to go for another Lunge here. Let's see if this Mew wants to go down another Shield. They do not, so they let it go through, and now they're going to come in with Stun Fisk. In this situation, we're going to switch our melee into Deoxys here. Still have Meganium in the back for the Stun Fisk if they decide to switch out. For the time being, looks like they're going to stay in. So let's see how this plays out here. Going to go for the Earthquake, I let that go through. And it looks like they're staying in. So at this point, I'm not going to shield the Deoxys at all. All I want from this Deoxys is to do as much damage as possible to the Galarian Stunfisk here. Really don't care about losing this matchup, of course, because I still have Meganium in the back. So the lower I get this, the better. If I could get some farm on the Meganium without even taking some damage, that would be optimal. So let's see how this goes. This should be a Rock Slide here, I'd imagine, which is probably going to be just short of KOing. And I'll probably get in one or two more counters. I get in one more. It's in the red. That's very nice. Going to come in with the Meganium here, of course. And let's see what the opponent's going to choose to do. They're staying in. So they're going to throw a rock slide here. I'm going to let this go through. Nothing too threatening at this point. Let's see if I can farm that. I expect them to switch out. They do switch out into Pelipper. So Frenzy Plant is going to hurt. This is probably going to get the last shield. And then I should be able to get to one more Frenzy Plant here. But I actually switch out into the Galvantula, which makes a lot of sense, of course. Going to throw this Discharge, which should be enough to knock out the Pelipper. And then the Stunfist is going to come back in. One Volt Switch is enough to KO. We are going to take that game. And we end up going 4-1 in, in that first set. Which brought me up, I think, to like 34-50 range after this. So, at this point, I was, pretty, I was pretty stoked because that was like the highest I'd ever been before on the leaderboard. Next set, we got the Trav Pete right here. So, actually, in between these sets... I did go 3-2, so I went up another 10 points, and then this is the last set I played. We got a Meganium lead here. You can see a lot of these matches, I'm getting very positive leads, and you know that's part of the thing. Like When you're building a team, you want to build it around what you're seeing the most. I figured that Galvantula had a lot of good matchups based on what I was seeing, and I'm trying to take advantage of that trend, right? So Galvantula here, we get to a second lunge before they throw a move. And at this point, they're going to shield up. They actually switch out into Toxicroak. I'm going to bring in Deoxys, which is a pretty nice wall here to Toxicroak. I mean, it's not a wall exactly, but it's a pretty nice matchup here. It is going to win this match in most situations. Going to take that Sludge Bomb totally fine. 
I'm actually going to build up for the Thunderbolts here, throw this, this is going to do a lot of damage and should put it in a nice farm down range here. Now, looking back on this match, I actually wasn't counting the Toxicroak moves, so this is probably only a Mud Bomb, which I should be able to survive, but I didn't want to take any chances because I need to maintain Switch, so I did shield that. We had a shield to give anyways, we're still even on shield, so definitely going the safe play there. And now let's see what the opponent wants to do. They come with Meganium, which is great. This is going to force them to throw energy. They still have more energy, so for that reason, I'm probably going to come in with Meganium so that their energy really isn't too threatening to me. And they swap out into Stun Fist, so very good matchup here, of course. Let's see if I go for the Frenzy Plant or go for the Earthquake. I think just going straight Frenzy Plant in this situation makes a lot more sense here. They're going to have to shield at some point anyways. They do shield that first one. At this point now, because I got the first shield, I'm probably going to go for the Earthquake the second time. And then I should be in a really good spot. Definitely want to save my shield though, because that Meganium should still have a Frenzy Plant ready. So I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. This is just going to be short of KOing. And this... Sunfisk is going to get another rock slide. The good thing here is that if it wants to get rid of the Meganium, it has to get rid of both of its moves. And remember, the Meganium has energy, so I can't shield this. Gonna come in with the Galvantula. All I need is one Volt Switch here. Should be close to a lunge. Meganium comes in. This is what I was saving the shield for. Shield this up. They do not have another move ready because they threw energy at the Deoxys. Gonna throw this lunge right here. And the only way I'm going to lose this is if that Stun Fisk has a Rock Slide ready, but it just finished throwing back-to-back -back Rock Slides at the Meganium. So the Volt Switch comes through. We take that game and another win for the team right here. Let's jump into the next battle. Going up against Fasult196. So we're going to be leading a Galvantula lead once again into another Mew. So there is a lot of Mews right now. Every time I see Mew, I think of the Asian Milkman line, of course, which is Mew Skarmory Scrafty. I uh, haven't really actually been seeing too much of that, but I am seeing a lot of leads, a lot of Mew leads. So Mew is definitely one of the best Pokemon for a great lead. You can see this time I over a little bit more before throwing. And again, I'm afraid of the Flame Charge, so I'm always going to shield up the first one. Uh, pretty much anything's going to hurt Galvantula, right? So they do get the attack boost. There was a Flame Charge. And now I'm going to go for the Lunge here. So let's see if they want to burn another shield. They do. At this point, I know Galvantula does win the two shields, it's just whether or not they're going to try and catch the move here. So I'm going to shield this up. Let's see if they try catching or if they stay in. At this point, looks like they're staying in. Oh, they do catch. Very nice catch there onto the Ninetales. Very well played. This is going to be doing pretty much nothing to Ninetales. I'm going to swap out into Deoxys. Deoxys is a very good matchup here. Now, I noticed that this Ninetales is running Charm. So for that reason, I realized that I could actually build up to two Rock Slides here. And then I'm going to throw one and have the other rock side ready for the Mew if it wants to come back in. So notice I'm not throwing yet. Building up for two. Now I'm going to throw this. I'm doing this purely because it's running Charm, right? It's not going to get to the moves as quickly. Rock side is going to be enough to kill the Nine Tails. If Mew comes back in, I have the rock side ready. If they bring in something else, I could try building up for Thunderbolts. really depends on what it is. They bring in a Zoom roll, so this is really good for me because I have the Thunderbolts. I have Meganium in the back, so things are looking really good right now. And you can see my line actually does extremely well to a Zoom roll, especially with the Thunderbolt on the Oxus. I really do not lose to a Zoom roll at all across this line. So it's a somewhat anti-meta line, and it's working so far. So at this point, the Zoom roll has, it just threw energy. Of course, I'm going to come with Meganium here. And I'm actually not going to throw the energy because I want to save it for the Mew. So this is what I was anticipating. I don't know if the opponent was actually trying to catch here onto the Mew, but this is what I wanted to do. I wanted the energy to go towards this Mew because the Azumarill really can't do anything here. Ice Beam is not going to KO. And then I am going to get to this Frenzy Plant, which is going to be enough to take out the opposing Azumarill. And we're going to take this game. So we're on quite a roll right here. This team... Like I said, we're seeing a lot of positive leads, but again, that's kind of the team I built. Uh, next matchup here, looks like I started recording very late, but we see an Alolan Marowak lead. So this is actually one of the most difficult leads for this team right here. Gonna go for the Discharge right away. Usually they don't shield, so I like to just get off as much damage as possible. If they let this go through, I try switching to Deoxys, hopefully to catch a Bone Club here. Looks like they did throw at this point. So I do catch the Bone Club, which is very good. And now it looks like the opponent's staying in. So when they're staying in, I assume they're going for the Shadow Bone here. So I could have actually threw the Rock Slide, but in case they did switch, I was holding on to my energy. Uh, could have been CMP tie. Actually, they go for Shadow Ball, so that's even worse. That's a nuke. Actually, it's probably better for me that they don't have Shadow Bone, but Shadow Ball would have pretty much knocked me out. So a good shield right there. 
and they bring in Azumarill. So I have the Thunderbolt ready. I have a lot of energy actually because I didn't throw. The only thing is because I didn't throw at the Marowak, they still have two shields. So let's see if they're gonna let the Azumarill go down here or burn one of their shields. They do choose to decide to burn a shield there. So they're bubbling me down here. At this range, I might be in range of play rough maybe. I know Hydro Pump, yeah, Hydro Pump's gonna KO. So that's gonna take me out at this point. Probably going to come in with the Galvantula. I think my play here is actually to shield up next move and commit to a straight farm down. And basically by doing this, what I ensure is that if the Marowak comes in, it's going to have to burn the shield or like, I don't know, like depends what they have in the back, right? But I like having the two moves ready here. It is the Marowak, so I'm going to throw the Discharge here. This will either take out the Marowak or get the shield. It does get the shield. This forces me to throw the energy again, which tells me they might be weak to Galvantula in the back. If it's a flying type, I'm kind of screwed. But if it's some, uh, Meganium, for example, if it's Meganium, I'm in a good spot here. And notice what I did there. I actually did not throw the lunge because they were at Frenzy Plants and I didn't want the CMP where they actually get to the move a bit slightly first. So I actually banked that lunge just so that when I come back in, I'm going to win CMP tie against this Meganium. And as long as I can put the Meganium into a range where Lunge will KO, I'll be in a good spot here. So I'm gonna throw the Frenzy Plant right here. Of course, this Frenzy Plant isn't going to do much, but it is going to put it in range of Lunge here. I think at this point, the opponent's actually trying to build up for back-to-back -back Frenzy Plants maybe, because that's probably their only win condition. Assuming that I do not have Lunge ready on my Galvantula, you can see they're throwing right before getting knocked out. This is gonna take out my Meganium, but they are going to lose CMP, even if they have the Frenzy Plant ready. So I come with Lunge. You can see they actually got another Vine Whip through there, which is really weird because I had the Lunge ready. I was clicking it. Thankfully, I didn't throw a Volt Switch instead because that could have been really problematic, but we do take that win there. Against the Marowak lead, so as you guys could see, very difficult, but not impossible. Depends on what's in the back. We got Ross Bug here in the next matchup. And I battled this trainer the other day and I actually was able to pick up the win, but in this case, they made some really nice adjustments, so let's see how they played it differently this time. So Sunfist lead, of course, I'm gonna come into my safe swap, which is the Oxus. Usually they go for the Earthquake here, so I do tend to shield the first one. It is an Earthquake, and now they're gonna swap out into Venusaur, so. If I have Psycho Boost, of course, it's gonna be a huge threat to Venusaur. So let's see if the opponent wants to throw a shield up, they do. And now I have another move ready. The thing is, the last time I played this opponent, at this time that I was battling, I actually did not recall what the team was. After the battle, of course, I remembered, but the team he has actually wants to ensure that they keep alignment. So it's not too surprising to see that he's shielding everything here because once you see what his backline is, it makes sense how important it is for him to keep switch advantage. And I'm pretty sure at this point he realized the team I had and he knew that he needed to keep switch advantage basically so the main issue here is that I have to burn this shield now on the Venusaur if I got this lunge just one second earlier I would have been in a good spot still but because I had to burn that shield I'm pretty much in an unwinnable position now it's gonna be very close because what the opponent does in fact have in the back is a Pelipper now I might have been able to switch out there got that last fine whip on my Meganium instead just to get a bit of an energy lead but it's a Pelipper here. Of course, Frenzy Plant is going to hurt. The main problem is because I don't have that shield, I'm not gonna be able to shield up the Hurricane. Opponent is going to get to a Hurricane before I'm able to get to another Frenzy Plant or Farm Down, which is enough to take out the Meganium. So at this point, it's Stun Fist on Galvantula. Really nothing I can do. Very well played by the opponent there. I'm gonna throw this lunge anyways, just for some pride, but this game is basically over. I could throw a bunch of lunges. They're really not gonna do anything here and the Stun Fist could farm me down if it wants. Gonna throw the Rock Slide here, which is going to be overkill on this little spider, and we are going to lose that game. So, a pretty tough team comp there. I mean, it's still winnable if you could take back Switch, but very hard to take Switch against the Venusaur. One, two, three, say yeah here in the next matchup. So again, finishing off with a very talented trainer once again, and we have a low nine tails into Galvantula. This is a horrible lead for my Galvantula. So, can see I'm actually staying in. I'm gonna go for the Discharge here, and then I'm gonna switch out into the Deoxys immediately. Let's see if they choose to shield this. They do. I'm gonna switch into Deoxys right now, and the opponent is actually staying in. They're gonna throw some energy here, so I'm gonna let this go through. Nothing really threatens me too much. For, well, I'm assuming it's like Psy Shock Weather Ball. None of those would really threaten me, and they did try to catch a move, it looks like there, so I didn't throw the energy. 
saving this for the Azumarill that comes in. Going to throw the Thunderbolt here. And at this point, I should be able to get to another move, I believe, before it gets to one. No, I'm not. I could probably get to a Rock Slide, maybe, but I'm gonna let this go down here and then come in with the Meganium. So, could also make the Armies come in with the Galvantula. Thing is, that energy on Galvantula is gonna be kind of useless against the Nine Tails. I mean, maybe not actually in hindsight because it was pretty low, but I'm going for the Frenzy Plan here. I actually tried undercharging after I realized what was going on because I do have two shields still, but. If the Nine Tails comes back in, I know I could get to a Frenzy Plant. The question is, will I be able to get to two and have enough health for whatever's in the back? At this point, I don't really know what they have is in the back, but I'm assuming maybe it could be like a Paldi Toad, for example. So I go for the Frenzy Plant here. Uh, this is probably going to get the shield if they want to keep the Nine Tails alive, which they do. And then they actually chose to back out. So I'm assuming they either had something very weak in the back to Galvantula Meganium, or they were intentionally trying to lose maybe and tank the rating i'm not sure i don't think that player was trying to tank they probably just had something that was weak to me in the back so see right here shiny latios super hype that's a 91 percent iv 15 attack so was pretty happy about that and after this set i actually ended up jumping up to 35 12 my highest elo ever in the go battle league so those were some of the battles in the Great League with the team that has brought me up to 3500 MMR. Had a lot of fun with this team. Is it the best team? Obviously not. It has a couple of weaknesses, but the team performs very well based on what I've been seeing. And I'm pretty happy with where I've been able to reach on the leaderboard up until this point. With that said, I do not consider myself an elite player by any means. A lot of these players that we battled here in this video are miles ahead of me in terms of skill and accomplishments and everything. So it's a privilege to be able to battle players of this caliber every time I do battle them of course I feel like I'm getting better but I do not consider myself anywhere near that elite class of battling. If you guys have any questions regarding this team please leave them in the comments section down below. I know a lot of questions revolve around Deoxys replacements. It's pretty hard to replace Deoxys. I think the main replacement might be something like Mew, XL Metacham, Hypno could be okay, Vigoroth, Obstagoon are options, Toxicroak maybe. Thing is a lot of these operate a bit differently. Remember the team is entirely weak to Alolan Marowak so if a team is performing like this with one weakness across I'm sure you could find a suitable replacement that could make it better or at least perform Form at a similar level. So with that said, good luck in the Kanto Tour event it is today. Hope you guys get a lot of shinies. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.